What's up? It's Dr. Mike. Today, I wanted to talk about why regular shoes are so bad for you. So if you're someone that is wondering what is all the fuss, what is all the rave about barefoot shoes? What are my regular shoes doing to me? Are my current shoe wear bad for me? I'm going to try to clarify that for you in this video. Today, I wanted to make this as simple as possible. I'm getting a lot of questions from friends, family members about what exactly are the benefits of barefoot shoes and what are regular shoes actually doing to our feet? In order to do so, just wanted to go over just the basic anatomy of the foot and not really go into detail about the specific bones, but what actually your foot is supposed to do. So if we think about the ground being this hand and my left hand being the foot, initially when our foot is, is going to hit the ground, and we're going to talk about a normal gait pattern, right? But initially when we hit the ground, the first area that typically will hit the ground is the heel. So we'll accept weight through the heel, then we'll move through the midfoot, which is kind of in the middle there. And then during push off, we are gonna, we call that a push off phase. We're gonna use our toes to push off and propel us forward. Now, what happens is, is when we have shoes, regular shoes that are very narrow, and, and this is the problem with regular shoes, this is one of the problems is they're very narrow. What happens is now your toes are very confined in this small toe box. So a lot of the times we'll see toes kind of going on top of each other, even toes curling. You may even notice when you take off your shoes, sometimes your toes feel like they curl or even some cramping on the bottom of the toes. That kind of tells you that one, either your shoes are too small or two, that the toe box is just too narrow and small. So as I was talking about before, now that you have a narrow shoe box and you go to try to push off, your toes now are confined and formed to the surface area of your shoe. So if you have a very narrow shoe box, now your toes are going to find a way to conform to that narrow shoe box. So that's just one of the problems is that the in a regular shoe, the, the toe box is just so narrow. Um, another problem we see with regular shoes is just the flexibility of a shoe. And so this is a Nike shoe. I wear Nikes, I enjoy Nikes, but I kind of want to just show you what I'm talking about. So when we're talking about a shoe, we're talking about the front of the shoe, the mid shoe, and the heel of the shoe, right? Because we're assimilating normal walking, hitting through the, the calcaneus or the heel, midfoot, and then our toes. So we can tell that in this shoe, my toes will have the ability to bend up and down, right? But when we start to get to the midfoot and the heel, when I try to bring the heel to the toe, we can tell that that just doesn't happen. It's very hard to fold, and that's primarily because of the rigidity and how stiff the shoe is. Versus if I were to take something like a Vivo shoe here, and I would try to bring my toes to the heel, this has a better ability to fold up. And honestly, for like traveling and stuff like that, it's very nice to pack in a bag and fold up so it doesn't take very much room there. And flexibility of a shoe doesn't just mean heel to toe and up and down, it actually means how does your shoe give you the ability to accept forces, torsional forces, so twisting forces like when we twist our ankle. So we can tell that you know when we look at a shoe that's more rigid, it is very difficult for me to rotate this shoe versus when we take a look at the flexibility of a regular minimalist shoe, we can definitely twist the shoe a lot more. And you may think that's a bad thing. Maybe if you are a chronic ankle sprainer or you have bad ankles and you feel like, well, I need that support. Well, if you had that support and that was built by your own support, which is your own muscles, your own tendons, and they are trained over time correctly by strengthening them with the proper exercise, doing the right rehab and wearing barefoot shoes, you don't need to worry about that stability at the heel or at the rear of the foot. We can tell that the ability to be flexible is important, especially for your foot. Because if you're not flexible, if you're in a shoe that's more restricted, 
over time, your foot is going to get more restricted. It is going to get stiff. It is going to get tight. We've all heard the analogy, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's very true. That goes with mobility. If you're not mobilizing your joints on a regular basis, you're going to lose that range of motion and you're going to get stiff. We talked about the narrow shoe box in a regular shoe. We've talked about the flexibility of a shoe. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was the cushion in the heel. And that's the last problem that I wanted to bring up for today was the amount of cushion that is in a regular shoe. And so if you take a look at this shoe, you can't really see from the side or anything like that, but you can tell when your shoe is inside that the sole is basically protecting the bottom of your foot. However, you're not able to feel anything from the ground. Now with a regular shoe, when we're talking about cushion, your foot is going to be further away from the ground because of the amount of cushion that is within the sole, okay? Versus something like a barefoot shoe. And this is why they call them zero drop shoes because your heel is basically closer to the ground and there's minimal cushion within the sole. So you're gonna be able to feel a lot more on the ground when you're walking. And we do have a lot of small nerve receptors and little small blood vessels and all these tiny muscles that give us input and feedback from the ground to let us know when our ankle is unstable, to let us know when we are on a unstable surface. And this is good for our feet. It gives us what we call proprioception in the physical therapy world, that awareness of your feet. And we never wanna lose that awareness in our feet. And so now if I take a minimalist shoe or barefoot shoes, we can tell that they are a little bit more slim. This is the only thing I don't care for barefoot shoes. I'm hoping in the future they create something that, I don't know, growing up, I, I feel like I wore a lot of Nikes, I wore a lot of Jordans, and I'm used to a very bulky um, shoe, you know, and, and comment below if you guys also like understand what I'm talking about when I'm referring to aesthetics of a shoe. I personally think that the barefoot shoes are definitely more narrower, narrower more flat, and so they're not always the most appealing shoes to wear because you could definitely tell pick someone out in the crowd when you're wearing a barefoot shoes. However, to me, the quality of my feet and my foot health and the way I move is more important than aesthetics to me. So uh, you'll find me most of the time wearing barefoot shoes, but I will go back and forth wearing my regular shoes, some Reebok Nanos that I will do some more heavier impact in. Uh, but ultimately, my long-term goal is to switch to all my shoes uh, barefoot. And that goes into the other point as far as if you are interested in, in going and getting or looking into a pair of minimalist shoes, it, there's a transition phase. And so um, if you are thinking about that, uh, I made a video about this in regards to how to transition into barefoot shoes because you don't want to just buy them one day and then try to go on a massive hike or a long run because your calves, your legs, your feet are really going to feel it. And so I'll link that video up here at the top so you can check that out. Um, but mainly I wanted to just show you guys what regular shoes over time have ultimately been doing to our feet. Um, we've kind of lost track. We're very into how good we look up top, down low. And oftentimes we find ourselves forgetting about our feet and forgetting about our foundation of what holds us up with our balance, what holds us up with our strength. Uh, and you'll be surprised when you start addressing the mobility in your feet, the balance of your feet, the flexibility in your feet, the strength in your feet, kind of repeated flexibility, but the strength in your feet, you're gonna feel more grounded, you're gonna feel stronger, you're gonna be able to squat down and move a lot easier. And you'll be surprised how many of your lower body problems, knee, hip, uh, joint problems can actually be improved by getting comfortable with bringing more awareness to your feet. And ultimately that's what we wanna do is bring more awareness to just living a healthier life and, and being more mobile and strong and resilient and to really just help us live a good quality of life with longevity, okay? So I hope you found this video helpful. I really wanted to answer some questions that I received from some friends and family members about why regular shoes are just so bad for you and just kind of go into detail on kind of what you can look for 
when you're looking at a shoe and whether it is right for you. So if you found any value in this video, I would highly appreciate it if you gave this video a like, if you subscribe to support my channel as a new creator, this does help me grow and I'm really enjoying these videos and I'm happy to be sharing more and more input with you guys. If there's a topic that you guys would like for me to cover, please comment below. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.